Okay. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our PIAC um, November 7th uh, meeting. And I'm seeking the approval of, um, so we do have quorum? Okay, okay. If anyone can stand, if you can, I'm gonna be reading the land acknowledgement, and then we start. We acknowledge we're hosted on the lands of the Mississauga of the National Bay, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Windat. We also recognize the enduring presence of all First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people. Thank you. I'd like to um, go over the code of conduct. Um, this uh, meeting environment is to be respectful and um, and open and ensuring that everyone has a voice at the table. And um, so uh, we're hoping that um, we all help support each other. And um, have a wonderful meeting. Okay. So I'm gonna go through some meeting administration at this time. Um, Anyone perceive conflict of interest in the room? Online? I don't know who. Who's have support in the on to see? Okay. Um, any change in membership status in the room? Online? Okay. okay. Okay, so we'd like to go through the approval of the consent agenda, um, the agenda and the October 3rd minutes. Um, I have a question. Okay. Go ahead. Um, this is a question to staff. Um, I notice uh, in the agenda that we will be having the co chair's election. Um, I'm just surprised that the bios weren't included in the package. So I just wonder why. I also note to all members that last week, the bios uh, for candidates were only sent to the TDSB email addresses, which we all know very limited access to those. And it wasn't until I pointed this out and um, got that rectified the following day uh, that that occurred. So I'm just surprised again that the uh, bios are not included in the package. So I'd like to know why. Through you, Chair. Uh, we had just opted to put all the bios out in virtual form to ensure that all members would be able to, to view it. Uh, that's why we didn't feel the need to do a physical copy due to the number of people that would have been in the room. That was all. If the Chair would like it done, we can get it done quickly and have it in the room. Yeah, that would be good. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So um, the approval of the consent agenda um, again, agenda and the October third minutes. Who would like to um, move? Um, Janice, uh, Ward 11, and anyone else would like to? Anyone on? Who would like to second? Okay, Ward 5, um, Zina. Anyone um, is in, have any issue with the agenda? If not, then um, we, would, we could go ahead and pass it because. Uh, huh? Okay. Is anyone looking for a recorded vote on the agenda in the minutes? 
No object. Seeing that there is none, then um, the agenda has passed. Thanks. Okay. okay, would like now to go to the co-chairs update. I'm going to pass it over to Andrew to speak about the co-chair update. Thank you, Sharon. Um, so a couple of updates. Uh, so first off, the motion uh, that Sarah brought forward to the committee um, uh, back in June around the issues around the uh, shared email addresses and uh, parents' ability, parents and caregivers' ability to communicate um, for school council purposes and advisory committee purposes. Um, did make its way to uh, PSSC, which stands for Program and School S Services Committee, on October 18th. Uh, I was there and uh, was able to speak uh, to the recommendations and to the issues because we had made, made a rec recommendation to board. Um, <clears throat> at that, um, there was a, 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 a very um, strong discussion um, uh, so uh, trustees Dawson, King, Laskin, and Williams uh, echoed PIAC and parents and caregivers' frustrations with the TDSB staff's inability to resolve the communication issue going back many years. Um, trustees discussed the issue for over 20 minutes and uh, sought information from staff uh, multiple times. Um, the staff, again, uh, did say that it needed to be referred back to staff as it was an operational issue. Um, trustees. Um, did acknowledge that, but felt frustrated by that fact. Um, and staff did, in conversation, commit to resolving the issue. I think this is an example um, of a member bringing forward an issue that's a long-standing issue. And as PIAC using, um, you know, which is under our statute um, authority um, from the province to make a recommendation to board and to staff uh, to try to resolve issues around parent engagement. So I think this is a success, and staff committed to coming back, and I believe staff will speak on this today, and we can hear what plan they have in place to improve it. Uh, Sarah Ali from Ward 2. I just want to echo and thank you, appreciate for the co-chair's support in bringing forward, and including from our members at the co-lead table for school council committee. That's a stepping stone. We have other ones coming up for this year, so thank you. Great. Um, the second piece has to do with uh, last uh, co-chair update. Uh, Sharon and I provided sort of the purpose of PIAC. So we provided um, the purpose as laid out in Regulation 612 um, to in, um, increase pupil achievement and student well-being. Um, we also want to, this time we put in TDSB's um, vision and multi-year strategic plan. I think it's very important as a committee of the board that we are in line with um, the vision of TDSB as laid out in the vision and multi-year strategic plan, um, which states the vision for learning. Our committee is, is uh, equity of access and outcome for all students sorry, commitment. Uh, TDSB is committed to creating an equitable school system where the achievement and well-being of every student is fostered through rich, cultural, authentic learning experience in a diverse, accepting environments where all are included, every voice is heard, and every experience is honored. And then second uh, part of it is the vision of service. So our vision for service is the Toronto District School Board is to foster a culture that values service excellence and continued improvement. Every decision we make supports student well-being and learning, providing responsive and effective service to the TDSB primary clients, our students, their families, and school communities plays a significant role in that while working uh, well the work of the business and school operations departments might not directly impact their efforts to build service excellence culture enables those who are directly responsible for students' achievement and well-being to remain 
completely focused on serving the needs of the students. So I think it's important for PIAC to, to um, PIAC members to recognize that we fit within this and that we're here to support that. And then there's some additional information uh, as to the five-year plan. Uh, you can look at it on the next page. Uh, we also like to uh, thank um, the membership working group uh, for putting together the election for co-chair, which will happen today. Um, there is also the PIAC post, and um, there's still opportunities for work, uh, working group sign up, and then uh, the working group uh, schedule for the remainder of the year is there. And uh, also, if you're looking how to get access to the PIAC uh, Google Drive, it's available in the report. I've, and I believe that's it. And I will, oh, sorry, the last piece is um, the append there's an appendix which actually has the recommendation that went to board um, that uh, Sarah put forward concerning in the uh, school um, uh, school council support group. Uh, that, if you wish to read that as well, Sharon. Thank you. And 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 as an on a note, um, we th we thank you all um, to all engaged PIAC members for their efforts in advocating for parent and caregivers voice and continue push for student achievement and well-being um, improvement. It may not appear that our work is important and immediately impactful, though changes are happening. So thank you um, to all, your me all the members that uh, your voice um, is actually um, making an impact within the board. And if it doesn't look like it, it is happening. So um, continue um, doing what you're doing in order to help support our, our, our community. And now our trustee report, Trustee King. Thank you to the co-chairs. Thank you, staff, parents, caregivers, and community tuning in. Uh, I would like to start, I believe it's important to start tonight um, with an acknowledgement. Uh, so as I speak to parents, caregivers, and community, I just wanna take a moment to acknowledge the profound devastation and grief that I know that many families are experiencing and navigating right now. Uh, as far as the role of trustees, I want to share with you that trustees have received numerous emails regarding statements issued by the board, uh, as well as concerns about safety. These have been expressed by members of the Jewish, Palestinian, Arab, Muslim communities within our school board and their allies. As trustees, from our role and responsibility, we have been sharing uh, and reiterating steps to address incidents of hate, racism, and bias in schools. We have also been sharing the culturally responsive resources like the affinity wellness videos that have been created by staff. Um, we have also heard very timely and encouraging messages from the director, from the chair, and from other trustees about focusing on our commonalities and what brings us together in this time. So again, I think it would be remiss not to address what I know what many uh, families are experiencing, uh, and we continue to listen and be open to your feedback, and I hope that what we are providing uh, as a board and as trustees is supportive. November is recognized as Hindu Heritage Month as well as Indigenous Education Month at the TDSB. Just a reminder that all families are encouraged to participate in that learning and to access the resources that have been provided by the Hindu Heritage Month Committee and by the Urban Indigenous Education Center. I'll just add that the messages um, that both these months center on also really complement the earlier discussion. We find that we are getting a lot of messages about one world, one family, about community, about togetherness and connectedness. And I think that's a really important and positive kind of refocusing uh, and recentering. So I sincerely hope that folks really are engaging uh, in that material and learning along with our children. 
Uh, I'm reporting on the October cycle of committee and board meetings, which were particularly productive conversations. There is a complete list of decisions from the November 1st board meeting available uh, through the link that's been provided. It's being circulated both electronically and in print format for you. So if you would like to look back at the specific wording and decisions uh, that were approved, you can find them there. I'm going to take this opportunity just to highlight a couple of those decisions that I think uh, might be of particular interest for PIAC reps, as you might want to engage in further discussion with your trustees or with your school councils uh, about some of these items. Uh, so the ones that are highlighted, uh, we had a very rich dis discussion on number three regarding support for students without legal immigration status and newcomer refugee students and families. Uh, this was really um, inspired by both the staff report, but also from what we saw in Toronto through the summer and the fall with asylum seekers, various refugee situations, and we know that we'll continue to encounter this. Uh, and the motion that was put forward is really to make sure that the policies that we have are being implemented and enforced, uh, and also seeking additional resources so that we know that we're able to continue uh, to support students and families as they come into the board. Skipping down to number five, this is a, a very important one. So this was a business arising motion um, that was raised following our regular report that we get on the Ontario Public School Board Association. Uh, so in this, we discussed a memo that was distributed by the Ministry of Education to all school boards. And as part of that memo and as part of larger work happening, one of the things the ministry is um, moving forward with is an accelerated apprenticeship pathways program. This program uh, is a development of an apprentice, apprenticeship pathway that would start in grade 11 uh, and it would help students enter into uh, the profession, the area of skilled trades faster. But what it means and what is most important here is it means that students would be leaving the system after grade 11. They would not be completing their high school uh, diploma as part of this program. So we had a very, very robust conversation about many concerns um, if this were to go forward as uh, as, as presented and proposed. Um, there were concerns about potential for streaming of students. There's concerns for safety uh, and workplace safety for students. There are uh, a number of other kind of conflated concerns there. So what's important to know is that the, the board is responding through the formal consultation process with the ministry. We are rejecting any model that sees children leave the board before grade 12 and before obtaining their diploma. What's important to know is that this consultation is also open to other organizations and it's open until November 24th. So I say that knowing that many folks that are in this room and listening are connected to community organizations, you're connected to other groups that might have um, a very important viewpoint perspective and say and should have their voice heard in this consultation. So again, I'll make sure that that uh, link and information is circulated to you so that you can follow up separate from the board's response uh, as well. Uh, and then the last two that I want to just highlight quickly are number six and number seven. Uh, number six, uh, the board obviously, uh, a, a large part of our strategy and our, our mission is making sure that we have safe, inclusive classrooms where all children are acknowledged, respected, uh, and have equitable opportunities for success and, and really positive outcomes. We know that we contend with many issues that don't necessarily start in the board, but absolutely penetrate and impact our environments. Uh, so one of the advocacy um, initiatives that we've taken on is writing to the Ministry of Education in support of a human rights um, 
uh, Commission request for provincial anti-hate strategy. So the idea here is that there would be something larger than the school board, something all-encompassing um, that we would also have to follow and to support the work that we're doing. Uh, and then lastly, the last piece of advocacy is around child care, which I know continues, it's always uh, an important topic for parents. As a board, we want to be able to support as best we can seamless transitions through the day. We know that it, it's helpful when we have childcare spaces close to our schools and there is a, a comprehensive and integrated kind of approach. Uh, the chair has written to the ministry expressing concerns about the funding shortfall that is preventing us from building previously agreed to childcare spaces in TDSB schools. This particularly affects the areas of Scarborough, York, Etobicoke, and the Northwest. So that advocacy letter is available on the homepage of the TDSB website. You can read it in more detail. It also includes a map of current child care spaces across the board. So you can get a sense of uh, what we're delivering on now and also see a bit of the opportunity and the need uh, broader than that. Uh, so those are it for um, board decisions. And then the last thing I want to uh, just let you know is two upcoming dates. Uh, next Wednesday, November 15th, is the organizational board meeting. So this is an annual event where uh, new positions for chair and vice chair are elected and also selections are made by trustees for all of the standing statutory and advisory committees, including this one. So this is the point where there's potentially a turnover in your trustee representative uh, on this committee. So to be aware of that, um, but obviously the mandate and all of the work of this committee uh, remains the same and continues. And then the next regular board meeting will be on Wednesday, December the 6th. So I will end it there, and I know that we'll have an opportunity for questions a little bit later in the agenda. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee King. Um, we're just going to wait for questions until after staff um, staff update, the PCO update, and then we have question period. Okay, so um, senior staff update. Sorry. Are you okay? So, Sorry, Chair, just uh, one request. If you could just ask all members online to just indicate their ward numbers, that would be appreciated. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Um, can everyone um, online um, indicate your ward number? If you can rename yourselves, please. It will help for um, the upcoming event happening later for the, um, the votes. The election. My apologies. I'm just driving as I'm listening in on the meeting. I'm for Ward 20, Chris Living. No problem. I'll give it a few minutes if you can just, um, while we go, if you can rename yourselves, your name, and then your ward that you're representing. Okay? Please. So, can we do that just before the time of election? Because Anyone having issues? Um, if you want to put in the chat so that um, this PC. EO could help us out. Okay. Michelle, are we good? Okay, thank you. Sorry, senior staff update. Um, go ahead, um, Executive Superintendent Chan and you, Tan Robinson. Thank you very much, and through the chair, just want to um, send our uh, well wishes. Um, we've had a couple of um, exciting parent uh, initiatives happening recently, and I know Executive Superintendent Yutan Robinson is gonna to speak to it, but we were able to join the conference uh, that happened online uh, a few weeks ago, and I think it was very well received. And we know that this evening, we do have our co-chair election, so just want to acknowledge the hard work of our current team and our appreciation for the teamwork that is uh, uh, and the leadership of PIAC for the past year. Uh, whether it is the same team or a new team moving forward, we welcome the opportunity to continue this collaborative work. As uh, Co-Chair Andrew Waters mentioned, 
on October 18th, there was a motion from PIAC that went to our Program and School Services Committee. And as he did describe, uh, very much as I was gonna share, there was a robust conversation with regards to emails uh, and access of communication uh, for school councils. And so we do have our executive officer, Peter Singh, who has come to our meetings in the past, who to start um, sharing some of the plans moving forward with regards to addressing this issue. We also welcome an opportunity, uh, and he welcomes an opportunity to get feedback and perhaps uh, through the direction of PIAC, we can get a sense of what the best working table perhaps might be to get further input. So I'm gonna pass the mic over to um, Executive Officer Peter Singh, if you are online, to speak. Good evening, yes, I am online. Uh, hopefully my sound is coming through, Claire. I'm we requesting for a screen share so I can uh, share my slide deck. Please let me know when I can share my material. Uh, please go ahead. Thank you, and I'm hoping you can see my slides. Uh, we met as a team and uh, looked at how can we revisit the process we have in place. Just wanted to show a little bit of a workflow right now uh, when school council's uh, accounts are created. So on the left hand side, you can see what's the present process is where uh, communication goes to the school from the parent and community engagement office. Then the school actually requests an account in SAMS, it's just a, SAMS is a system we use to create accounts. So once uh, that is triggered, IT services creates the account and the school council is able to log into that account. And this process, that's where some of the challenges we have heard so far, that it's not working everywhere. In some schools, it's fine, but in some other schools, it's not. So we revisited the whole thing saying, what else can we do? So here's a uh, thinking from the group that uh, parent and council engagement office will trigger the communication and they will communicate with SOEAL to collect the data from the schools. So SOE, superintendents ALs, they will collect the data from schools. They will submit that data to IT services in bulk the IT services will create the accounts and follow up with the school councils to ensure the sign-ins are happening. They send information back to the school council. When the account gets created, that information is emailed to them on their personal uh, email address they would have given us. And we, IT services, will also do a follow-up even after that to make sure everything is working fine. And at the tail end of this process, the parent and community engagement office will circle back again and doing a kind of a survey to make sure all accounts were created and the individuals were log able to log into it. So this is a new process we are proposing. What kind of data will be collected? It will be like first name, last name, the school, and the uh, school's, uh, again, counselor committee position, telephone number and a personal email address. That's what will be collected by the ALs and submitted in bulk to IT. The other piece we looked at, it was um, account deletion extension piece. And the process uh, around this one will remain unchanged. The school council accounts have an expiration date of approximately one year. So we have kept that one for the security reasons. 
So therefore the school will need to trigger that process. We have an online form which school just submits and that process automatically gets triggered on the IT side to extend that account beyond one year. The other piece was the support itself. And uh, on the left hand side, you can see how school consults are supported right now. And uh, the school council request goes through the school and the school assists, actually school calls the IT and then the information goes back to the school council member. The new process we are pro proposing is if there is a password issue, the school will reset it. But all other support will come directly to IT services. And I will share on the next slide what's in place and what else are we proposing so it's a better support available to that. The question is why password reset? The schools can verify it's the right individual asking for the password reset. We don't have any way of verifying who's calling us to reset their passwords. So that's the reason why we wanted the local school to do that piece, but other support will happen directly from IT services. So right now, for the last few years, we had uh, support by school principals and vice principal that stays. And uh, now, the school council members can call the support our help desk and also we are setting up a hotline it's the same hotline we have used in the past we're still using for student virtual learning piece we just added another workload to them to just support the school councils for that one too so that's a, a new support line being offered as a part of this shift and change uh, that's what I had uh, for today to share. I will stop sharing, and uh, if there are any questions, please go ahead. We're just going to wait till um, we have the PC update, and then um, any questions can be um, addressed at that time. Go ahead, Michelle. Thank you. Back to the floor. Thank you very much, Peter, for that. And uh, I know that this new process will have uh, fewer touch points, so to speak, so that we hope that this will be more so efficient. I do want to now introduce a good colleague of ours, uh, Elizabeth Otto, who is the System Superintendent, Leadership Development, Employee Engagement, and Continuous Improvement. And PIAC has asked for some information related to the multi-year strategic plan renewal sessions that have been happening throughout our districts. Uh, I was at one a couple of weeks ago and it was wonderful to see the collective of parents, staff, trustees coming together in terms of this initiative. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Elizabeth Otto to give a, an overview as to how these uh, sessions are going and some of the impact that it'll have going forward. Elizabeth? Uh, thank you, and through the, the chair for that introduction. Um, as Executive Superintendent Uton Robertson said, part of my portfolio is to support the renewal of the multi-year strategic plan. We have been engaging in the multi-year strategic plan consultation since the spring through a variety of formats, including surveys, small group instructions, ward forms, and also we hosted a session at the PIAC conference in May. We have come to the um, end of our engagement session. Um, working in collaboration with Trustee King, we'd like to provide PIAC members with an additional opportunity to engage in a uh, multi-year strategic plan engagement session. The two dates that we've offered to the chairs and the staff are Monday, November 13th and Tuesday, November 14th. So we would look forward to an additional opportunity to engage in any uh, additional feedback during that time. Thank you. Thank you for that. And again, I know that through the chair that uh, you'll have an opportunity for questions a little later. 
At this point, I want to turn it over to Associate Director Audley Salmon, who will share some information related to the global circumstances that we're all working within. Thank you. Thank you, and through the chair. Part of what uh, the TDSB has been focusing in on um, as we um, identify how we support our students, our staff, and our communities um, in light of the conflict that currently is taking place is really trying to focus around uh, aspects that include um, providing support to students through learning resources and also through uh, mental health and well-being type of resources to provide to our communities. There are two specific ways that we are focusing in this particular area, starting off with um, information that was provided to parents and students um, through School Connects and our November 3rd mail out that went out to all families. This particular uh, mail out included uh, a series of videos uh, to support the emotional and mental wellness of students, parents, guardians, and caregivers. Uh, these particular uh, videos um, really focusing in on different identities within the TDSB community in order to identify how to support and work through uh, challenges with respect to global, global conflicts. I would encourage all parents and students and staff to please take advantage of these particular um, videos that have been emailed out to all parents and also um, as they are located online uh, on the TDSB website and has been sent to the parent community. Secondly, one of the other things that we are doing um, in order to try and address some of the ongoing challenges um, with a real focus around students. Um, what we have done is through the Center of Excellence for Black Student Achievement, um, we are working on creating affinity spaces that support those students particularly who identify as Jewish or Palestinian within our communities by having an opportunity um, with our staff, social workers, and trained professionals in order to come together in affinity spaces at Forest um, Valley, which is one of our um, outdoor conservation type centers, uh, to bring groups together in order to discuss how we better build and support each other and work towards a level of understanding for students across our system. They represent two um, distinct but unique uh, areas for us, but part of what we're trying to get at is the idea that as we deal with these types of situations within the global arena, we want to really go back to ensuring that we are looking at the issue of learning, supporting students in that area, and also supporting students, staff, and community around mental health and well-being. So those are just two key areas that I wanted to provide an update to parents on this evening because we think that it's vital that we play a role, and that role is with respect to education and support for our students. Thank you. Thank you, um, Associate Director Salmon. Um, I wanted to go to, before we go on further, um, PIAP members, it's really, really critical for us to be involved in the multi-year strategic plan. Um, we're silent on this as a group, and we won't be silent. So um, November 13th, 14th, um, we will have a delegation, um, a group that will have a conversation um, with, um, you know, um, with that with your group so we're not we're not ignoring we will be there we welcome we welcome you and we're, we're happy that you're here to see, remind us hey piak we haven't heard from you as yet so thank you for that um i will work through the pc office in order to um have our like a working group our delegation a consultation team and i'm looking forward to um our group um being there I know that one of our member, our lead is not here and won't be available for a bit. So I'll be the lead um, in terms of how supporting and then within that group we'll go if we don't have anyone else who would lead the team. So let us know internally um, who is willing to be part of that group, okay? Thank you. Um, now we're open for, um, Michelle, go ahead if you have anything you need to say for PC office or if um, you're okay with the, um, what you've submitted in the agenda. So, Through your chair, you know I'm always okay with what's been submitted in the report. I'll take any questions you may have. Thank you. 
Thank you. Um, I'm open, the floor is now open for questions. Um, um, see anyone? We'll go, go online first, and then we'll go on the floor. Anyone from online? Uh, who's, I don't see who's monitoring. I can see. No one from online? Michelle? Anyone online that has an, uh, Ward 6? Seema? No, that, what's that? Ward 16? Through you, Chair, Ward 18. Hi. Ward 18, I apologize. Uh, Seema, go ahead, Ward 18. Hi. Thank you, Seema speaking. Um, I did have a question. How do students and teachers presently perform a password reset? We, we couldn't hear you. Could you speak up, please? Oh, sorry. Uh, how do students and teachers currently perform a password reset? Through you, Chair, the question is how, it's also in the chat, how do parents or teachers do reset password? I believe that question is for um, Peter. Yes, it is. Uh, through the Chair, uh, there are multiple ways that this happens. Uh, the teachers at a school level can reset uh, students' password through our SAMT system we have in place. Also from grade five to 12, we have a self-service portal set up where the students have uh, set up a question or a, a another way of informing that they are the key person. It's almost like a multi-factor authentication and they can trigger their own password through that mechanism also. Same logic applies to teachers. They have self-service portal for password resets. If they're not able to do that on themselves, we also have our service IT portal where they can they submit their request or somebody else can submit a request on their behalf. And the teachers can also submit a request for a student on our portal also. So there's multiple ways this happens across the system. Thank you and back to the floor. Go ahead. Through you, Chair, just a confirmation, Peter, are parents or teachers able to do a password reset for school council chair email accounts? For, okay, for school councils, the school principal have that ability to do that through the same SAM system. Yes. Thank you. So just to clarify again, um, when it comes to individual student, then it would be the teacher. But when it comes to school council, then that would be the principal who's also on council that's going to help support that, correct? That is correct. Okay. Or designated VP if that is the case, correct? Yeah. My answer will be yes. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions online before we go to the floor? Through your chairs, I see Ward 17 followed by Ward 10. Go ahead, Ward 17. Tanya, and Thank then Ward you. 10. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just had a quick question regarding uh, feedback on the app apprenticeship program. Um, are students still able to complete, I don't know what we call it here, or the equivalent to like a GED or a high school diploma equivalency testing, um, even if they go through the um, the apprenticeship program or the proposed apprenticeship accelerated program? Through the chair, I'm gonna do my best to answer. My understanding of the models that are currently proposed is that once a student follows that path, they are no longer a part or a member of the school system whether or not they pursue um, like night school or uh, another means through another institution uh, of getting any kind of certification um, or credits uh, that would be separate from what we offer and i'm just speaking off of like my best knowledge right now um, but happy to go back specifically to that memo uh, and look at um, any specifics around that for you as well Excellent, thank you. And what avenue would we give our feedback um, if you are in the uh, trades industry or are very familiar with the trades industry and the lack thereof 
of skilled trades um, from a different point of view, what avenue would we go to give our feedback? Is that through you, trustee, or? So through the chair, through I will make sure I provide the link for the responses to that consultation so that it's available to everyone. There are some guiding questions that they're looking for folks to respond to, but I imagine that there's always room to provide feedback that supports growth of the trades. We certainly, we understand that we want to see that. We understand that we want to see more women in the trades. We're, we're supportive in many ways. Um, from the board's perspective, our feedback is really around that distinction about uh, leaving the board and leaving that pathway, but there can certainly be room for feedback around other positive aspects of investing and developing um, pathways into the trades as well. Perfect. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, I'd like, before um, we go to Ward 10, I'd like the... Um, associate director or team to explain if there is any pathway that's um, supporting trades at this time and what's the difference between what the what's been said through the chair thank you yes there currently is uh, a pathway that leads towards uh, apprenticeship type programs through our either OYAP program or the dual credit program or the skills trade uh, involving sector councils. So there actually are already three distinct ways in order to move a student uh, forward with respect to ending in an apprenticeship type program. Part of the challenge with this particular recommendation or um, consultation process is that the suggestion in one of the options is that students after completing a total of 16 credits uh, at the secondary level or age of 16 would effectively be going forward into an apprenticeship program where the employer would become the key connection for their learning and education over the course of the next one, three, five years. Um, that's our concern with this particular proposal or recommendation and that's part of the reason why um, we as a board uh, would not be able to support that particular pathway based on the challenges that it poses. In particular, when a student who may be 17 years of age engages in an apprenticeship type program through an employer um, under that particular model where the employer is the key point of contact, we get into a situation where the student may after two years, may after three years make a decision that maybe they don't want to do that particular trade. And then you now have a 19 year old, 20 year old who is no longer in school, who do not, does not have a, a a, a secondary school graduation diploma and is not quite sure where to go and what to do. And that's the situation we really cannot support at this point in time. Thank you. Thank you. And just to be clear, the pathway right now um, encourages or ensure that the student graduates as a high school student and still have the apprentice or the skills, the skill trade, correct? Yes, that does. Thank you. Thank you. We'll go to Ward 10, and then the room, and, okay, Ward, Ward 10. Go ahead, Bruce. Oh, you're yeah, in the room. Yes, yeah, sorry. It was a um, clarification from Mr. Peter Singh. Uh, is there a turnaround time for requests for the SAM system setup or password reset through the principal of the school or vice principal? Uh so the quick answer is, the moment principal does that, it happens right away. So for me to put down a timestamp when the principal responds, we do not have that SLA in place. So for me to tell you when the principal will respond on a query like that one, it's, I can answer and commit to that one. Thank you. Back to the floor. Okay, so um, uh, Peter, so it would be, since it's a school council related query, then it would be our school council that would be working alongside the principal to ensure that it's covered off. And that should be covered off right away, correct? There will be that, no That is correct. I mean, the okay. system is there that can okay. uh, trigger that change right away. So okay. you don't have to wait. So it can be done within a few seconds, but 
as request comes in and uh, leadership at the school is also extremely busy with other activities happening. So they will be prioritizing which task is going to be done next. So for me to tell you that principal will act right away or they need to wait 15 minutes or they were on their lunch. I, it's, it's, un, it's, it's not fair. So it just a local call that individual will be making it. Okay, thank you. Um, just, just as um, housekeeping, um, and I know that this is new to us, but um, if you're in the room, then I just show your hands in the room, and then I will go around um, for the room, okay? Um, I think Andrew, Co-Chair Walter, go ahead. Uh, thank you. Um, I, I do appreciate the work that's been done uh, to look at the email situation. Um, I appreciate the, the effort being done. Uh, I see a couple of best practices closing the loop um, to make sure that there, there's, there's follow-up um, so that re issues are resolved. Um, I would uh, just suggest, um, and again, hopefully uh, we can work offline with the PCEO office uh, or the PCCEO office to um, maybe uh, set up a place for recommendations. But uh, I did note that um, uh, the accounts expire after one year. And again, like PIAC members, for example, are here for two years. Um, and also school councils. A school council may not form until, um, or may form early one year, and then next year not form until like mid-October. And so this was kind of the situation I ran into where I'm trying to support um, the incoming uh, co-chair, um, and I was sort of, I guess, reset or something happened. So I think looking at that timing um, might be a good idea because especially during the months of September, October, um, making sure people continue to have access is probably an important thing. So, but I do appreciate the efforts uh, that are being made to try to uh, resolve this and the importance it is for uh, parent engagement. And then I have uh, one other uh, piece, and I don't know who to direct this to, but um, this month is, uh, I guess, French immersion sign up for uh, um, JK um, uh, students that will be going into JK next year. Um, and again, uh, I had brought this up back a couple of years ago. Um, I, I'm just trying to understand why we have registration for French immersion for JK in November, but registration for English in February. And um, my concern is, is that you know parents that have the social capital and um, privilege would be able to figure this out, but parents that are new to the board or don't have a child yet in the board um, may miss out on an opportunity to put their children into French immersion. Um, and I'm just trying to understand uh, the decision that was made to keep these separate. Thank you. So thank you and through the chair, with respect to the uh, French immersion um, challenge, why is there junior kindergarten registration for French immersion in November where traditional kindergarten registration is taking place in the month of February? Part of what is um, the unique situation that TDSB finds itself in is the fact that we are probably the only board in the province that guarantees a placement in French immersion to all learners so long as there's a specific number of students that request that particular placement. So in order to do that, which requires that we have enough French teachers in order to meet the needs for the French immersion programming, we need to be able to ensure that we have a teacher in that particular classroom. In order to get to that, because it's a guaranteed thing based on our policy, our staffing timelines requires that we have all that information in before staff is actually allocated. So it's the running up against the March 31st deadline around staff having to be allocated. The only way we can actually do it is by moving the actual French registration to be earlier. Because if we were to keep it in February, we would not be able to guarantee parents that they would have their students, their child, in a French immersion program in order to and have a teacher in front of them. That's why we actually do it. But I think the point that really resonates with parents is, why aren't we doing them together? I think that that's the real challenge. And part of what we are embarking on doing um, is 
established, we've established a committee to look at how we align the regular JK registration um, in February with the one that takes place for French immersion in November and coming back to board um, with a recommendation with respect to bringing those two groups together. That's our goal. That I, can't, I will not provide you with a timeline for that, but that is our goal because we think it makes more sense. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, in the interest of time to ensure that um, we, um, we, we go to the next um, important, um, not that not everything is that important, but our co-chair election, which is key. Um, I'd like to now call on our membership working group team lead, Janice and Jenny, to take over. Go ahead. Thank you very much, Sharon. Um, on behalf of Jenny and myself, the, we are the working uh, membership working group. We're very pleased to have been able to facilitate this year's PIAC co-election along with the assistance of the PCCEO um, uh, group. And I would also like to thank Andrew Waters for his hard work and dedication to PIAC over the last two years. And we look forward to continuing to work with you um, in the coming years. So I just want to go uh, quickly over how the conclusion of the election will proceed. Um, we are going to uh, continue the process with nominee presentations. We're going to be using an online voting application called Election Buddy. The voting period will open immediately after candidate presentations, and that's going to be approximately 8.25 p.m., and it will close 15 minutes later. All co-reps from the 22 wards, that's all reps from the 22 wards, and the Community Liaison uh, Advisory Committee rep will be granted one vote. So presently, that is 38 uh, reps. Um, a notification will be sent to your personal email with a link to an online ballot. This is going to be sent to your personal email address where you would normally receive your PIAC meeting reminders. Um, please check your spam folders if you have not received the online ballot after the voting starts. Um, we highly uh, encourage you to vote online. However, a traditional paper ballot is available here for those in person that choose not to vote online. And it's impossible for you to vote more than once, so the system will reject your subsequent attempts. Um, I'm going to hand it over to Jenny right now, and she will facilitate the candidate presentations. Thank you. All right. Hi, everyone. Bear with me. I, I got sick, so I uh, got the big C. So um, <laughs> if you can't hear me correctly, just let me know. Uh, so we have four candidates that will be presenting their profiles. Uh, for those who have submitted bios ahead of time, uh, they have been sent out to you, and I believe you guys have all received a hard copy for those who are in person. Uh, each candidate will be given three minutes, and this is going to be a hard stop, um, and that's the three minutes maximum to present, after which we will proceed with the vote. Um, the four candidates who are running are Andrew Waters, um, our current co-chair, and he is in Ward 9. We have Zena, who is the co-rep for Ward 5, Kay Dean, who is our co-rep for Ward 8, and Bahira, who is our co-rep for Ward 14. Uh, so to make this fair in terms of presentations, what um, we did was we added all four candidates' names into a random list generator um, to create uh, the order in which you guys will be presenting. So the first person who will be speaking will be Kay Dean. Now, I just wanted to confirm before you start, because um, I can share my screen and put up a three minute clock, but I'm not sure if you guys will be doing that in person um, there. Michelle, could you confirm? Through you, please go ahead. That's fine, Jenny. Okay, so I will share my screen, guys. I'm gonna try to make it so that we can share both the clock and the speaker. So just bear with me for a second. Okay, and I believe the speaker should be able to be seen as well, correct? correct. Um, so, Kay Dean, you'll be up first, and when you're ready, just let me know, and I will hit start on your clock. All right. Thank you very much, Jenny. I will start now. There we go. 
And I want to extend my thanks to the membership committee, to the PIAC uh, leadership, the PCCEO office for this opportunity. And I, it is very much my pleasure to have the chance to represent myself amongst uh, a group of fantastic ward reps and parent volunteers. I've been with the PIAC now for coming up to four years, and the majority of that time, of course, during COVID, while we navigated all of the challenges of what it meant to do our work, to uh, provide our students and families the necessary supports online. And I know how hard everyone has worked to continue to keep this committee and this important component of parent engagement going. What I want to say uh, by way of why this experience and this opportunity is important to me is that it is certainly a move for me to step out of what is a definite comfort zone to be able to more effectively support the work of, the di of this dynamic work of this com committee and acknowledge that what I've seen in the past four years is a significant amount of change in representation, in the reps, uh, even in our trustees, our staff, all of this has continued to change. And what that means is that, <clears throat> at least for me, that there is a lot of value and emphasis that we can put on building and strengthening relationships between our members on this committee. And my hope is that by putting the emphasis on what it, on what it means to have good relationships, mentorship, having uh, our experienced reps work alongside new representatives or our ward reps means that these relationships, our sense of belonging get enhanced. We will continue to see engagement and participation in our working groups grow. We need everyone's participation to continue to do this work. Um, and I think, you know, not to lessen what is being done uh, and everything that everybody contributes. But in fact, you know, we can't take away the importance of what it means to have relationship building as a part of our work, right? We're business as usual always. Everyone is very efficient. But if we are really thinking about how we can share the work, share our responsibilities, to put uh, time in how we get to know each other, help our members feel a sense of belonging, um, and then better be able to better go out and engage our parents, our school communities, to be involved in this committee, to bring their voices forward to our work um, in the board. So thank you very much. Thank you, Kay Dean. Talk about right on the mark. Excellent. Um, thank you. Our next person to speak, um, according to our random generator, is Bahira. So Bahira, you can go ahead and let me know when you're ready. And let me just get the clock restarted for three minutes. Sorry, one second, guys. OK. OK. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, my name is Bahir Abdel Salam. Uh, I'm a civil and structural engineer. I have PhD in civil engineering. Uh, I'm a small business owner. I'm a mother for three boys. And uh, I have been involved with the parent council and uh, uh, with the PIAC for around one year. Uh, so uh, I really have a passion for uh, building bridges between uh, parents and the school boards uh, because uh, uh, my involvement with uh, various activities um, um, made me feel that I can speak for parents, uh, especially uh, those who feel underrepresented and uh, uh, one of the activities I have done is uh, managing uh, one million more for children. Uh, so many parents, they felt that there are lots of things are missing. They don't feel their children, uh, uh, th there are needs that are not communicated effectively with school boards. So I want to be this, uh, uh, providing this representation. 
Um, I also um, have uh, the experience of uh, um, the engineering experience and uh, as a woman in STEM, so I believe that I can add value for having uh, um, engagement between uh, the school boards and universities and um, uh, bringing some new ideas to the table. Uh, so, uh, uh, I also was um, uh, a candidate for the mayor of Toronto, so I, I managed a, a campaign uh, which made me um, uh, on a daily basis communicating with parents and with families. So this gave me uh, the insight about what people really need. And I believe this is one of the most important things for uh, uh, the, and the representation uh, in the school board. So we are here to uh, speak for people and to represent them and to express their needs uh, and uh, to uh, represent everyone. So uh, I think that uh, uh, this is going to uh, add uh, value for uh, as a new blood, uh, so uh, as uh, someone from a minority group and uh, from a different uh, background, I think uh, there is a need for uh, uh, this kind of uh, representation. Um, so thank you so much, and uh, I'm looking forward to work uh, with all of you, and uh, Thanks. Thank, thank you, Bahira. I'm loving that I don't have to actually uh, cut anyone off. <laughs> so the next person on our list um, is going to be Zina. So Zina, just let me know when you are ready and I will start the timer. Hi, Jenny, I'm ready. Okay, go ahead. Good evening, everyone, from staff to PIAC executive membership to our fantastic ward representatives Hi, my name is Zina Sherik. I currently am the rep for Ward 5. Uh, my journey with PX started in 2017, and I could regale you with all the things that I've done. I will mention a few, but really, in truth, it's all been about community. It's about, about voice. It's about listening. It's about building those relationships. And I will tell you, at one time, the relationships weren't as grand and wonderful as they are now. So the reality of going through an experience of building and listening, bringing everyone together, whether it was staff, whether it's uh, parent and caregivers, whether it was community members, and making them feel listened to, making them feel included, making them heard, their voice heard, making them feel as though they have a space, a safe space to communicate, to collaborate, to share, to engage, as well as to support, supporting the well-being the health and well-being, the mental health and well-being and achievement of all the students across the board, a passion that rings through with all the voices that we've heard over the years. So as a co-chair, uh, which in fairness I have held that held once before at PIAC, um, my role would be more of a support, uh, helping the navigation, allowing people to learn new things, allowing people to explore, at the same time supporting the vision of the board as well as PX's vision to support school council, which is a hard job. We all know that we've been there, whether we've been a member of a school council or whether we've been to a school council event. Things I've done at PX which have given me the opportunity to share, um, and given me the opportunity to learn and grow and listen and build relationships have included the PIAC conference, as well as the student school council appreciation event, including the membership committee, yes, I was on the working group once too, um, as well as a consultation working group. I happened to be one of the happy members of PIAC at the time, a co-chair that helped navigate the boundaries of the wards that we have today and where the PIAC reps sit in those. And I will tell you that was a, an adventure in maps and in negotiating where people were and things like that. So would I love the opportunity again? Yes, would I love to work with everybody? Absolutely, and I think it's a place where we listen to each other and we build relationships and we collaborate and we do more, we learn more and we go where we need to go to make changes that are gonna help support and get the achievement that we're looking for with everybody at the board. Thank you. Thank you, Zina. So last but not least, we have Andrew. Andrew, when you are ready, just let me know and I will start the timer. Okay. 
I'm just going to reset it. Okay. All right, go ahead. Thank you. Hello, everyone, um, and uh, PIAC uh, members. Uh, again, uh, my name is Andrew Waters. Everyone knows me here. Um, again, uh, so I think first off, uh, when I think about um, leadership, I think about that it's service um, and support. Um, and I, I think from that perspective, looking at what the purpose of the organization is and then how can we connect that to the out, output or impacts. Um, so again, and I've said this many times to many people, but the purpose of uh, Parent Involvement Committee is to support, encourage, and enhance parent engagement at the board level in order to improve student achievement and well-being. And there's three things uh, that the uh, regulation lays out to provide information and advice to the board, so that's through our recommendations, to communicate and support school councils, and to undertake activities to help parents of pupils of the board to support their children's learning. And lastly, PIAC, both PIAC and school councils um, are very important accountability mechanisms to, uh, to provide accountability for parents. As you all know, I'm very passionate um, about public, uh, well, public service, specifically public education. And um, I've sort of the last couple of years I've been here really focused on setting up structure. So again, uh, working on the working groups, we're finding them, we had 15, now we have six. Um, and make, focusing around the purpose so that we can be successful moving forward. Um, the four years prior to myself uh, being co-chair, this committee passed three recommendations to the school board or school um, staff since I became co-chair supporting um, members that has, is actually 18 recommendations in the past two years. So these are, uh, again, numbers around the achievements that we're trying to make together. Again, today is an example where when we make recommendations, when we make our voices heard through that, we can actually uh, have staff listen to trustees. So I find that very important. I want to spend the last uh, bit of time on sort of my vision going forward. Um, it, again, it's to su support the, account the enhancement of the accountability. So supporting members to make those recommendations because that has a greater impact than anything else. I know we focus a lot of time on the events and those pieces, but again, those only can support up to 400 to 600 people. We have 250,000 families. So we should be looking um, out from that perspective. Um, further, uh, I think it's really important to ensure that we can support uh, PIAC members. And one thing that we did look at is getting engaged in the awards, which means providing funding directly to PIAC members to support engagement in the awards. Thank you. All right, thank you, Andrew. Okay, I'm gonna stop the share. Okay, so now that we've had all of our candidates um, share their speech, um, I just wanted to um, say thank you to all and best of luck to all our candidates. Uh, so now we're going to be moving on to the vote um, momentarily. So you should have all received in your personal emails that get your PIAC notifications to um, the link to um, election buddy. Uh, if you don't, make sure you check your spam, as we mentioned earlier. Uh, if you are going to be doing, and if you're in person and you're going to be doing a paper copy, um, I think um, they'll be passing the most around shortly if they haven't started already. Um, the vote will last about 15 minutes. Um, it'll be a real-time tally. As per our bylaws, we are using a ranked ballot system. So you will choose your top choice, then your second, and so on. Um, and as per our bylaws, our tie will be determined by drawing lots. So when you go to election buddy, it'll give you the list of the candidates and you rank them and then the system will um, go on from there. Uh, Janice, is there anything else I'm missing? One moment, one moment. Thank you, Jenny. Um, uh, I don't have anything else to add. I think you did a great job at describing how the vote is going to go forward. I just wanted to remind everybody that um, each of the co-reps and the community advisory rep has a vote um, 
current sitting co-chairs do not have a vote. Um, and uh, again, it's a ranked ballot, so you cannot have two people occupying the same rank. You have to choose a position for each. Um, so I will now turn it over to the PC CEO office, who will take the election from here. Thank you. Thank you, Janice. Through you, chairs, I believe every member should have now received a ballot. Is there anyone in the room who requires an in-person ballot? Thereby seeing none, we'll just await for the vote to close. Uh, just wondering, we've not seen everyone's votes in. If you've not yet cast your vote, could you do so now, please? Please let us know if you're having any issues casting your ballot. Uh, we'll, just two more minutes, votes will close at 8.30, votes will close at 8.30.
We will be closing the votes at 835. Yes. Uh, good evening. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for your patience as we use this tool for this meeting for the first time, and we're hoping that it works with us. So what we want to do is just show you live what the election's outcome has been. Uh, so, Shijan, would you please? So because of the preferential voting, what you will notice on your screen is the system does automatically its adjustment. So what you'll find is round one, you will find that after round one, Bahira had the lowest vote. So what the system automatically did with the preferential ranking was moved it into round two. Um, and it moved into round two because we didn't have a unanimous based on 50% plus one candidate. So the system then automatically went into round two which then removed the person with the lowest vote, reallocated it, and then you will notice that in round, after round two, Kadeen was eliminated, and then now we're into round three where you're two candidates that we need to enter into a final round of elections will be for Andrew Waters and Zena. So what will happen now is we will prepare a new ballot with these two candidates, and we then need you to cast one more vote to be to determine the co-chair of PIAC. I have a question, like it's preferential balloting, right? Yes, so, so the machine automatically does it. 
I'd, yeah, but under preferential balloting, like we've finished the vote, right? And there's a tie. So I don't understand why we're re-voting. Because there's a tie and you indicated that you needed someone to have 50% plus one. We don't have someone with a 50% plus one of the votes. So what we do is we would do one more round to determine if there's gonna be someone with 50% plus one. That's what's indicated in your nominations procedure. You must win by 50% plus one. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, just also for the record, um, I was the only candidate not allowed to vote in this election, so. All right, so we will now exit the screen and we will resend another ballot out to each of the members. Just give us a couple of minutes to do that. Sorry, can you just double check to ensure that we have all the original members, if they're still online? The numbers that we started with for voting. Sorry, who do I address my question to? Sorry, I think, Janice, do I have questions for you about the the vote. <clears throat> it, it looked to me like it said 25 ballots, so I'm not sure how that could be a 50-50 vote. Sorry, could you repeat that question? F from what was displayed on the screen, to me it looked like it said 25 ballots cast. So. So I'm not sure how it could be. Not all the people up, uh, on like um, that are participating in the meeting virtually have signed on here. So that makes sense. I um, but I'm referring to the actual survey um, that was posted up there. It said to me, it looked like it said, and I have my glasses on, 25 ballots cast. Okay, I, I don't have access to that screen, but we'll um, have that addressed in a moment. There's the option to abstain. That could be what happened. Um, there was a question in the chat that needs to be addressed and um, Jenny, would you be able to just to read um, what's in the chat and the answer that was given so um, our colleagues on the floor is aware of what's happening? Are you referring to the question about if we were voting for one chair or two? Yes. 
Okay, yeah, so uh, Alice wanted to know if we were voting for one chair or two, um, and we just advised that the um, co-chair terms are usually staggered. And as you guys know, uh, Sharon is only in the one year. Uh, she, you still have one year left in your term. Uh, can I make a statement? Uh, in the inf interest of PIAC, um, I'm going to withdraw my nomination. Um, I believe that um, the election process, like to work out all the pieces around um, uh, rank balloting and e body and those kind of pieces, um, it s still needs to be refined. But in the interest of the committee, um, I will uh, withdraw my nomination uh, so that I'm not uh, eligible for the next round of voting. Sorry, um, Andrew, can you just repeat what you just said, please? Um, I don't think. Uh... I'm withdrawing my nomination uh, for co-chair at this time. Through you, Chair, if that is the case, then, then there is only one candidate standing and we would not then need to do the elections again. And in the sense of that case, Zena would be acclaimed as the new co-chair for PIAC. Congratulations, Zena. Zena, would you like to say a few words now that you've uh, attained the new co-chair position for PIAC? I will make it very short and sweet. I will say all members of PIAC are fantastic. Um, I have an important voice. And I look forward to collaborating, listening, and having those conversations and building relationships and continuing the great work that PIAC does. Thank you so much, Zena. Um, I would just like to say before we uh, close uh, up this, this election that I'd like to say a big thank you on behalf of the membership committee to uh, Zhu Zhen and Michelle for their support, expertise, and hard work in making this election process a very smooth one for us all. And uh, we're very happy for you, Zina. Congratulations. Congratulations, Zina. Um, I'm not sure if this is protocol, but um, Andrew, um, would you still be interested in becoming our um, advisor, the Emirate? Uh, yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So still be a part of the team. Okay. Thank you. So in that case, um, I'd like to congratulate Zina and I welcome you to the table. So um, we can help. You mean I can't? With immediate effect. Yes. <sighs> yes. Sir. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Welcome to the table, Zina. Looking forward to working with you. And I would like to say thank you to all my candidates. You're still our PIAC rep. Appreciate you. And thank you, Andrew. Um, I'm happy, even if you don't think so, but I am happy that you're still on um, to help support us um, as part of the group. And um, I want to say um, thank you very much. Um, before we go on to the next um, item, I would like to acknowledge our chair of the board, Trustee Rachel Jernus-Lynn and Trustee Dee Williams, 
I would like to say welcome. I'm happy you're here. And um, I just want to acknowledge you and I apologize. I can't see that far. I didn't realize you're online. And um, so I know that it may not be protocol, but I would like, would you like to say a few words, um, Trustee, Rich, uh, Trustee Charnas Lynn? Go ahead. It's okay. Is that okay? I, it's okay. Uh, no, just listening in, you know, uh, trustees love elections. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, it's yes. great. It's great to be here. And um, congratulations to Zena. I, I served in Debbie's seat um, beside Zena when I first became a trustee. So experience leadership and a huge thank you to Andrew Waters for leading PIAC um, with you, Sharon, for two years. Um, I know he's made a huge contribution and I'm sure will continue to do so in his emeritus advisor position, which is new to me. I didn't know you had that position. That's a new creation. And I think that's a great idea. So, um, and to all the candidates who put their names forward, it's hard to put your name forward. And, um, so yeah, anyway, it's nice to be here in, in just listening to everything. Thank you. And also before we do anything else, I want to say. Thank you to our, my colleagues. Without you, there is no PIAC. And without you, there is no parent group. So thank you very much for being here and um, helping support in this process. And um, uh, with Zena and myself and um, Andrew, who is our BR advisor, would like to continue supporting you and help all of us grow. So, one, so any one of you can be here at the table, help to lead us and grow us, because um, our voices need to be at the table every time, as long as the board is around. Thank you so much. Through you, Chair, just maybe you'd like to acknowledge Felicia, oh, who is oh, leaving sorry. her role. Oh. Sorry, um, sorry, Felicia, I did not realize, I apologize again, I can't see that far, so Felicia, welcome. And um, thank you for agreeing to be um, our liaison for the year. And um, I appreciate and thank you so, so much. And um, hope to hopefully to see you back at PIA uh, <laughs> one day, one day, one day. But as always, come and help support us in any which way you can, okay? And uh, of see. course, um, you know, as I transition, as I transfer out of this position, I'll, um, of course, help Andrew transfer in as um, PIAC co-chair liaison emeritus uh, alumni. I don't even know what our official title is, but uh, uh, congratulations, Zena, and uh, congratulations to all the candidates. And uh, yes, thank you to everyone who put their name forward. It's been um, a few years since we've had a a good um, election um, and it is uh, it is challenging uh, to put yourself out there and forward for uh, judgment by your colleagues but uh, PX always been a very welcome and uh, supportive group so um, so thank you everyone and uh, Andrew you know uh, be in touch as to uh, how we uh, transfer stuff over and congratulations again to Zena and uh, best of luck, Sharon. Good seeing everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you. So on to um, working group reports, um, membership. Yes, thank you, Sharon. Uh, let me just uh, call up my working group report here. Um, actually, I'll, I'll just look at the printout. Sorry, just give me a moment. Thank you. All right, I just wanted to uh, give a um, recap of what's going on with our membership. Um, I did issue a report last Friday and it was sent out. 
Um, I, and it's also in this package for all of you that are here in person. So currently we have um, the number of sitting members at 38. So that's 37 co-reps plus uh, one community um, liaison advisory rep. Um, for our meetings, we need 40% of the sitting members uh, rounded up um, for quorum, which is uh, 16. Uh, a number of members signed up for a working group is only 14. So I'm really hoping that, um, you know, 38 minus 14, the difference there, that you can all get yourself interested in signing up for a working group. There's so many great um, groups happening and, um, uh, you know, the meeting is only once a month and there are lots of enjoyable things for you to get involved with and also many important things um, for you to get involved with. So please uh, make an effort to find a working group and uh, get yourself involved. Um, we didn't have any new uh, PIAC members from the last time, but I just wanted to again welcome Eden uh, Hagos and Shelley Kalperger from Ward 16, who got, um, they were both elected in May of last year. Um, currently, we have seven vacancies, and we have eight members, or I'm sorry, we have, eight, yes, eight members with expired terms, and um, four members with upcoming expired terms. So um, there should be some ward elections coming up, but right now we don't have any schedule that I'm aware of. So again, please uh, get yourself signed up for a working group. Um, get yourself on the Google um, sign up for the Google um, Drive if you haven't done that already and all those links are in the report and uh, that's all I have to say and again congratulations because it was the membership group that helped to facilitate the elections and congratulations to Zena. Thank you. Thank you and I wanted to say thank you membership group. Um, Janice and Jenny, Jenny Janice, um, powerhouse team, um, the J to the power of two, um, that helped put this together. And um, we, um, we appreciate all that you do. This is volunteer and there was a lot of hard work in the background um, to, um, to facilitate the, um, what we're doing now, which seems very seamless, but there was a lot to do in the background. And without the strong, strong, and I repeat, strong support of the PCCEO, uh, Michelle and Susan, um, this wouldn't um, happen as smooth as it does. So I really, really want to say um, thank you. And can everybody give them a round of applause? Thanks. I appreciate you. Thanks. So on to the event working group. Um, is Nadia on? I'm here. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Go ahead, Nadia. All right. Well, um, first, I just want to say thank you, Andrew, for your leadership and congratulations to my former co lead of, um, of the events working group, Dana. So um, there is a co lead position that's available if anybody is interested. Hint, hint. Um, all right, so on to the report. We don't have a written report. We will be submitting that uh, hopefully tomorrow. We had our event meeting, um, working group meeting last night, and um, we just basically discussed what the, the prep work that went in over the summer, and we were just finalizing uh, some things that have to get done for the event to be launched, uh, such as communication um, plan. And we were discussing whether we're gonna have a one day event or a two day event in align with our budget of 30,000. And then you're looking at um, the times that we would have like host the event. And um, so we were just more talking about you know, logistics of the event and what's gonna go into it. Uh, talking about a uh, possible um, one day versus a, a two day, but again, that's in line with the budget. And um, so that's everything for working group right now. We're just right now in working with the PCCO um, 
to get certain things done, such as um, finding our venue. We want to get some um, quotes, and we have four. Or sorry, we have two venues that we're looking at: fifty fifty being one, and um, the library um, at the the Memorial Hall, uh, the basement of Memorial Hall. Um, yeah. So we're just looking into those things. And then we also are looking into just possibly securing a permit with Earl Hague just as a backup in case the uh, preferred venues don't get, um, don't work out with our timeline, meaning February 34th of dates. And that's it for the report. Thank you. Any questions for events working group? And I should have asked any question for membership. Good. Okay. Someone hands it up. Uh, Seema, go ahead. See your hands up. Is that true? That's not a hand. That's not a hand. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I apologize. No, I thought there was a hand. Oh, dear. Ward sure? 19, go ahead. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Good evening. Um, question for membership, and I'm not sure if they will be able to answer. I'm just curious as into the next oh, step. Can't hear you. Can you speak in the mic? Yeah. Can you hear me now? No. Uh, no, no. We can, Shanti can barely hear you. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Um, question for membership working group, and I'm not sure if maybe PCO or. Coach can't hear you again, Shanti. Or... Sorry about that. Can you, put in the can you hear me? Oh, if you put in the chat, then we can read it out loud because we've got the members here that need. Anyone in the room in the meantime? Through your chairs in the white. Are we, we okay now, Shanti? You're still typing. Okay, um, Shanti, once you put your messaging in the chat, then we'll. Oh, it's back now. Okay. Um, I'm going to read it out for you, Shanti. Curious to know steps being taken to address the expired terms of vacancies. Um, go ahead. Go ahead, PCCO, Michelle. Through you, Chair. I'll begin, and then I'll turn it over to Janice to do the rest. My office will be meeting with the staff that supports trustees. We're going to be going through the list with them to get a sense of what the status is in terms of proposed elections. Once we get a sense of that, then we'll send a message and a reminder out to all trustees, reminding them of their expired terms and a request for elections. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Um, I don't really have anything else to add to that except that um, the membership working group also helps to facilitate and support um, ward uh, PIAC rep elections. So we're there uh, ready to help. Thank you. One of the things that we could do as a group is um, um, see how we can um, tap into parents within those wards um, because you know a lot of us the network is wide and may perhaps speak to superintendent to see or principal to see if there's any parent that's willing to help support PIAC and um, this is where um, I'm going to as um, we as uh, co-chairs we have to also um, take that um, step as well to help support so we will do that go ahead um, as well, in the past, uh, what's also worked is actually having the co-chair send a friendly message out to trustees to say hi, you know, so they get a sense of who PIAC is and puts that voice to the 
PIAC committee itself. And then sometimes they engage and they start engaging more with PIAC because they realize, oh, wait a minute, there's this parent. You know, not that they don't know about us, but sometimes it's a different approach as well. So it's not coming from a staff, it's coming from a parent caregiver in the community saying, hi, we're here and, you know, we'd really love it to have you help support getting more of our members voted in. Thank you. Um, go ahead, Ward 2, Sarah. Sarah, Ward 2. What if the trustees are not active and we have a lot of parents in that ward who's willing to join PIAC? What is the process for that without the trustee? Good question. Go ahead, um, PCCO, Michelle. Through you, Chairs, the guidelines that shared with trustees around ward-based elections written by PIAC approved by trustees is where the trustee is unable to host an election, PIAC is able to go in and offer support around organizing that election. That's what's actually written in the guidelines that was approved by trustees themselves. Thank you. So just to clarify, sorry about that. The trustee have to do the ward, correct? The ward election, which means inviting all the schools that the trustee controls to it, right? What if trustees never put on any ward election at all, or not even engaged or active? Exhibit A, Ward 1. In light of a PIAC elections, the guidelines that you approved and signed off by trustees, where trustees are unable to do elections, PIAC may enter that ward and run an election. Okay, um, thanks. Trust, uh, Trustee King, go ahead. Thank you, through the chair. I just wanted to reiterate as well that through myself as the trustee rep and also the chair is uh, very aware and on the line right now that this will be uh, a priority and will be messaging that is also taken back to trustees in a, in a formal way. Um, but as um, we heard from the PCEO office, there is an alternative if that still isn't resulting in uh, those formal elections being held by a trustee in the ward. Thank you. Go ahead, Andrew. Uh, I think we've we've talked about this before, um, and um, I would uh, would suggest that PIAC take a look at um, uh, separating itself um, the way it chooses its membership from dependency on other uh, staff or. Uh, trustees. Again, uh, if we wait, keep wait a couple of months for something to happen, then it doesn't happen, and then eventually you get to our own process. Again, we are our own committee of the board established through regulations, and we should be able to establish our own process for uh, um, entering and exiting our membership. Thank you. Thank you. Um, consultation working group. Anyone from the consultation worker group? I know our lead um, is not available, Suzanne. Is anyone else part of that group that would be able to Three say a few words or no? Chair, no. Regrets were sent. Okay, no problem. So just, um, okay, then school council support working group lead? That is us. Thank you. Congratulations to the new coaches, Zina. Um, for us, it was about the email situation was the main one, but we have a few things coming up. I just want to announce, like, inform, please join in the school council working group. That is where uh, we're actually getting even co-chairs of school council to be part of, as a committee member, may not be voting, but they can attend. And just want to thanks and welcome one of the school council executive co chair who's here today from Ward 6. So thank you for that. <laughs> Nancy for taking the time. And this is crucial because that's where it's at in the school council. So, and thank you for Coach Zina knows. In regards to the email component, I just want to bring it up forward. Now that we're talking about multi-year strategic plan, one of the goal and plan includes community engagement and parents engagement. Please, please, please make sure that, I just want to know, include as a co-lead, how is that going to take place? What is the evaluation? What is the process to determine that this is going to take place? For example, the email situation, as I addressed last meeting, unless the principal have relationship with the school council, who is going to inform that the school council that they actually have emails? Uh, again, those are barriers 
in the school council system. There's also a request for training for tre and treasury uh, within the school council. Again, certain principles still controls the money aspect. It doesn't go down to the school council. So if there's some way from the PCO office to go back to in-house training, not just the YouTube or PowerPoint, but actually a legit training about treasure role, I had to say that, because we get the emails and complaints. Trust me on that. But if that could be, it would be greatly appreciated. If we can inform the principal once again, the rules and the policy of the school council and what's coming from, it's not their own area where they're gatekeeper, where parents feel uncomfortable attending the schools, um, unable to volunteers. There's all these aspects, and it's happening all the way from elementary, middle school to high school. So if we can get that process going, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, you guys can read it in the detail. We have an upcoming meeting coming up. And from the school council committee, we truly want to focus on engagement not only engagement with the parents, but also student success. So the new co-chair, Zina, is putting in more requests and deputation from the trustees coming up. One of them is also strategic plan, border aspect that's going on within the inner city, model schools, and also which ties into the treasury roles and so on. If anybody has a question, I'm available to answer. Thank you. Any questions online? Oh, Tanya, go ahead. Thank you, Chair. Um, just a quick question, and this may be better addressed within the working groups, but has the uh, School Council Support Committee um, considered a series of webinars or training videos for, um, for school councils, uh, physicians? That's the PCO office, but there are, if you go to our Toronto PIAC website, here's the thing, and I've asked, maybe this is where we come in with the event working group, um, including with the budget to be allocated um, for kind of like meet and greet of what PIAC rep is. So that would help out in regards to, because many school councils still don't know that we exist. Um, I have Nadia, Nadia from Events Working Group. I think you may be working on something like that. Would you like to expand a little bit if you're still online? Yes, yes I can expand. We are looking um, for this event, we're looking to do something a little bit more different uh, where we actually have, we're looking to utilize um, the school council a little bit more by bringing them out, highlighting them a bit more, giving them um, a little bit of an appreciation as well too from in the past where there was an appreciation event and looking for more networking, the school councils this year with the event. So uh, we have a concept of looking into maybe a marketplace as well. Um, thank you. Um, um, for school councils, looking where we might have, um, if our PIAC reps might um, come in hand in terms of volunteering, where we might have a table or a few tables set up and it could just be a PIAC reps and it would be something along the lines of like school councils would come and ask questions versus having all the workshops. We are looking at shrinking some of the workshops to the main popular ones this year, but more of having a focus on school council. Thank you. Um, because it's so new um, right now, I'm going to allow, um, turn this over to um, new co-chair, uh, Sherrick. Go ahead, Zina, if you wanted to add anything. Uh, sorry, just uh, I can't leave the events working group alone. I love them so much. Um, so one thing that the working group was considering actually at our last meeting was doing pretty much, you could say, a, a PIAC roadshow. So PIAC goes out to the communities, and that would mean easily that staff and administrators of the schools could be at these events as well. There's no reason why they couldn't. So if it means that a community of a learning center is saying, this is what we need, we need to talk about those barriers of our own administration in our schools, then PIAC gathers up their 
reps for that learning center. So it's more than just one PIAC rep so we can mentor each other and actually have a location within that learning center that can connect to the schools in that area so parents and caregivers can gather in that spot. And we're not saying, oh, it's just one event a year. Um, I think that was actually discussed at our June meeting. Um, so the working group took that back and thought, you know, we can use that budget a little differently, um, have that one day event and then actually start going out into the communities. And so if a rep is a new rep and thinking, oh, I just don't want to do this all by myself, they have that support of other reps. Um, and we're not working in silos, we're working in communities um, and making those relationships happen. Am I close, Nadia? <laughs> yes, yeah. Thank you. Communications working group, Seema? Sorry, Karen, I think that call me as Canada. I'm not sure if it was a question. Sorry. Yeah, um, Tanya spoke. Tanya, you need to say um, a few more words or questions? Oh, she, her hands are down. Um, go ahead, Seema. Hi, everyone. Um, we submitted our working group report, and uh, I apologize for being MIA for a bit. Had to in the my schedule is a bit weird all summer, so. But um, update, our web traffic is down, so we're not getting as many visitors to the site, but don't worry, it will go back up when we have our uh, more information at our conference and so forth. And uh, we definitely need people to attend our communication working group. It would, we really, really need help um, with social media. Nicole <laughs> Herbert has been taking on a lot of the work. And um, I think it would be nice if our actual PS reps who have been voted to represent their boards also, you know, um, perhaps consider contributing, you know, um, even if it's an article or, you know, um, anything that you want to share, it doesn't matter, right? Um, the last thing is we have a Slack channel that we, or a community we set up for PS. I know we've got some new reps. And if you aren't already on Slack, just throw your email in the chat and we'll send you an invite. We really encourage all of us to use it because it's an easy, simple way to stay in touch, share information in real time. Uh, I know a lot of us do use it for work, but I really encourage all of us to you know, use it for our PX stuff as well, just so that you know we can make decisions a bit faster and get work done a bit quicker as well. And uh, that's it for our working group update. Um, oh wait, we do have one more thing. Um, we're going to be meeting with Margaret from the PCEO tomorrow to renew some subscriptions. Uh, our, our subscription for MailChimp expired uh, last month or maybe before that, as well as um, our Canva. So uh, our PX post has been delayed a bit and we're hoping to get that sorted out by tomorrow. And that's it. Um, thank you. I have a question. Um, I'm going to turn over the um, the chair to Zina so I can ask a question on behalf of. Okay. okay. So the question is for PCEO. Have you supported um, the communications to ensure that all um, all of the the um, subscriptions uh, for PIAC to help support PIAC is that sorted um, to ensure that the websites doesn't go down, we can do our MailChimp, anything that needs the communication team to do the work on behalf of PIAC and not having us look like we don't have a group. Please advise. Through you, Chair, we're working diligently with you to do that. Uh, most of PIAC's systems are managed externally by PIAC. And what we're looking to do is put in place some mechanisms that as individuals transition out, we're ensuring that as the transition out happens, passwords are shifted and changed to ensure that the incoming. We didn't get a chance to cover that at the last exec, which I'd asked to put on the agenda, but I'm hoping we'll get together soon to be sure that we can get all of that online. Thanks. Um, so Seema, um, what, is, what is expired now that we're in trouble or we may have an issue with for the ongoing uh, business? As of tomorrow, once we meet with Margaret and she's going to facilitate the payments for Canva and MailChimp, I believe we should be okay. I'm going to kind of make a calendar of a renewal just so that we have it. It's hard to keep track. We've got four or five different ones per year. So I'll work with 
communication working group to get that calendar so that PCEO has that and it's easier for them to track it as well. Um, Seema, I, um, I appreciate it. I appreciate this because I know it's you've been doing um, you and your team have been doing extremely hard work in the background and, and, and one of the hard work is exercising a lot of patience in order for this to, to go. So it's not it didn't go unnoticed and we appreciate you for that. Um, Michelle, did you want to say anything or you're good? I know through you, Chair, I just wanted to clarify for the member. She used the name Margaret. Margaret Horvath um, works within the Parent Community Engage Caregiver Engagement Office. Just so everyone was aware. Oh yeah, my apologies. Sorry, everyone. Yes, my apologies. So um, as I can see, all hands are on deck in the PCCEO uh, office. So thank you, Michelle, for that. Um, go ahead. Looking at the time, um, I would like, if it's possible, for someone to put forward a motion just to extend our meeting ten minutes, just so we can make sure that we're getting to our ward updates, if there are any. Do I have anyone that will thank you, Janice? And thank you. And second that? Thank you. Katie, Katie second. Thank you. So I did another 10 minutes. Okay. We can continue. So we are looking at ward updates. Um, so is there any show of hands and we'll get to who we can of ward updates, things that are happening in your ward? Okay, although mind you, if you want to share information that's happening in your ward, feel free to send that to us and we can actually distribute it in our next, in the report itself. Michelle? Through your chair, it wasn't, of course I don't have a ward update, but there was a ward member who approached our office last week and there was an event happening throughout her school community. So she actually requested PX supplies. So what she did was you do have a large number of brochures and pens and t-shirts and a variety of stuff that I believe could be serving well your local council events or community activities that could be really great in promoting you at the local level so maybe if your ward is holding any events you may want to offer them you know PX brochures and as giveaways or gifts so what we did was she created just asked for bags where we stuffed it with your stuff and they were given away uh, the way that would work is please just give our office advance notice, maybe just about two weeks. You tell us the school and we just have it directly shipped to the school and you can pick it up from there. You do have a lot of stuff in storage. PCCO is running out of storage space. We're gonna have to be renting something soon to store you. So I would encourage that if there's any way that you could do that, I think it'd be great. Thank you, Michelle. If we have no other ward and ward updates, uh, we are moving on to new business. Is there any new business? Okay, if everyone wants to go home, I get that. Can I? Oh, yeah. sure. Sorry. Um, new old, it's just business to ensure that um, Associate Director Salmon, you're on the spot now, sir, um, that you and your team um, ensure that. Um, and I'm here in Loudoun Clare Special School Council that our, our senior staff on the ground within the school is supporting school council with their, um, their email update, um, access, access to system, password update, and that it's not left for five, um, two, three weeks that um, or the team um, or school council is not getting the access that they truly deserve. So um, if you can speak to your SOs to ensure that within their meetings, um, their principal meeting, that they um, stress the importance of um, supporting school council the way school council needs to be supported because our parents um, need to feel comfortable going to them and ensuring that things are happening so that they can do their business. And, um, and that rem remind them that school council is for the parents and they are out there to facilitate and support. So if you can, it would be very much appreciated because then the frustration that I'm hearing through school council ward, um, with Chair Ali Ward too, um, is a lot that's happening on the ground. And we're giving you and staff the opportunity to um, resolve as best as possible and then let us know the next time around. So we really need it. And I noticed that there are a lot of um, school council that are not up and running 
So we'll give the PC office time to get that going. But for you, sir, um, can you please go back to your team and let them know parents are getting a little bit unhappy. Thanks. Go ahead, go ahead, you can speak. Go ahead, sir. No, uh, thank you through the chair. Yes, we've already had the conversation around um, the school council emails um, based on what took place at the committee stage uh, uh, two weeks ago. And so we had the conversation with the executives of which two of them are in the room here in order to, and are well aware. We've had the conversation with uh, Peter Singh and his team. And our expectation is that we move forward and are, be, and are able to provide a more responsive um, process around uh, emails. We made a commitment on committee in order to resolve this particular issue and that we believe we have a plan going forward in order to resolve it. And we certainly welcome hearing from um, parents and community um, if we are unable to do that within a reasonable amount of time. Thank you. Thank you. And Sarah, for more too, again, with the co school council, but just the other thing, thank you, Co-Chair Sharon, for addressing this. The biggest thing in Elephant is not only the school council, there's no safety committee. A lot of the school council are still not aware the table that is provided, the school safety table, that they can be part of. Again, I just want to address it to PIAC. How do we know that information is trickled to the administrative or the principal in the schools? How will we know as a PIAC rep? Go ahead, Michelle. Can you respond to that, please? I, I will attempt it, Chair. Through you, what we do is I provide updates to you as to what communications flow from me. So the first communication that flows is the beginning of the year from my office. We send out, we sort of do it in order, a procedure. So school council elections is the first information that goes out to all schools. And it's really outlining for schools what the elections process should be, the expectations of principals in supporting those elections, ballot type of information. When that's done, we give schools a couple weeks and we send a follow-up in information, which is about elections again, just a gentle reminder that it should be done, and then a collection of school council contact and emails. We do that late October, early November, because then we start collecting information for you so we can get the email accounts that we can then turn over to you uh, to provide that to you by end of November, which is our annual commitment. And then we send out a follow-up uh, late November, early December to just now begin thinking about what council should be doing and how it should be operating. And I provide an update to you as those communications get rolled out. Oh, we have two more questions or two more comments. Um, to be courtesy of time, we'll take one more then, if that's the case. Or Katie in. Is it Katie and Behera? Last two. Last two. Okay, folks. So, and then after that, we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up so people can get home. So um, Behera, then Katie. Yes. Okay. Yes. Go ahead, Behera. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I just wanted to give you an update about uh, uh, the one million march for children uh, that we organized. So that uh, it was all over Canada on the 20th of September. Um, so there was uh, thousands of parents here in Toronto uh, calling for removing SOGI from uh, education system for in schools, uh, calling for the opt-out option and for uh, parental rights. So the uh, last week, uh, uh, I went uh, to the parliament with uh, Citizen Go. Uh, we submitted uh, a, um, um, the result of uh, a survey that uh, uh, for the opt-out option for the Minister of Education. Uh, I am not sure if this topic has been discussed here uh, on board or not, but if not, uh, I will be very happy to discuss it with you and maybe we will uh, provide more details because uh, my understanding is that lots of parents have been communicating with their trustees and they were uh, 
hoping that uh, the TDSB will discuss and consider their uh, demands. Thank you. Um, um, thank you, Bahir. Um, we'll, um, we'll take it offline and then speak with you about it and see where we can um, have a better conversation, maybe with a group, working group, and see where we're next and with staff as well, okay? Go ahead, um, Katie. Thank you. Uh, just a quick question, maybe a clarity or reminder, how PIAC members can participate in the two sessions scheduled for next week around the multi-year strategic plan? Perfect. <laughs> Good question. So um, it's one or the other. So we're, we're going to do is, um, uh, we're going to look some, because uh, we don't have a consult, It'll, the best working group for this is consultation, and we don't have a lead. So I'm wondering, I'm not going to put you on the spot, but I'm wondering if you wanted to take up that lead um, for consultation, and then we'll get a group of us to arrange a date, what date, the 13th or the 14th, to invite um, staff to come and speak at the, at the working group level, if you're interested. I'm, only, I'm not putting you on the spot, but... <laughs> If okay, not, so then we'll do it. We'll it just do. sounds like there is still some coordinating and some work that has to happen to enable that session to happen yes. next week. And it'll go through the PCU office. Okay. So we'll get, um, and, and we'll choose, we'll ask for, it's either the 13th or the 14th, we choose the date which we can have the staff come. Is that correct, uh, Michelle? Yeah. So we, it's either Monday or Tuesday, not both. So which day we can, we can, um, we can meet? I am willing to support and participate in anything that can happen on the Monday, Tuesday is a little difficult, so please, uh, you can let me know. And it's, it's online, correct? Virtual? It's a virtual presentation? Virtual presentation. And then we'll, is there a time frame that was given? Um, I'm not sure. Oh, go ahead, Trustee. Okay. Through the chair, the option that was um, provided by Ms. Addo's office is any time after 5 o'clock, on either the Monday or the Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So it would now be up to this group to respond with a time and a date mm -hmm. that work. Uh, and it would be up to you on what the participation looks like, whether that is isolated to the uh, consultation working group or whether you want to expand that to make sure that you're getting uh, the most amount of PIAC voices uh, involved as you can. Uh, so up to you on how you want to run that. I know that you do have the working group for consultation. And for that, everyone is invited. So um, everyone on board, um, everyone can be a member of the consultation working group. It's just um, we have a platform and then we can utilize that if um, our team would like to, um, to join. So it's not exclusive to one or two, it's, it's inclusive to all. Um, go ahead, Andrew. Andrew yeah. yeah, yeah, sorry, go and ahead. The, and the, yeah. Um, i just like to point out to the members um, that the reference to SOGI um, by one of our members, it refers to the, um, sorry, one second. Uh, where'd it go? Sorry, Oop, there we go. Uh, sexual orientation and gender identity. Uh, this is a protest movement, uh, both in the United States and Canada, uh, that is anti-inclusive. Um, some describe it as transphobic and um, against uh, people who are expressing gender identity beyond our, our normal dichotomy. Um, I just want to make sure that members are aware of this. Again, uh, when I was co-chair, um, I did speak about it at the beginning of the meeting of the values of the board, of which um, this is a committee of the board. And again, um, I think having these types of conversations that um, do not support all the students and their well-being are, are not appropriate. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. And actually, to be, again, courteous of time, I think what we're going to do is, because we've already discussed uh, that. Excuse me, I have to respond, because this is offensive. Like, I cannot, I encourage, we cannot be left without response. I encourage the co-chairs to intervene on behalf of the, the entire membership and the students. No, I'm not going to. Point of order. Um, so, excuse so, me, I have to uh, respond. Here, this, I have to respond, it's, it's because okay, it's okay. he Can, is let, offensive. Do you want me? No, do this you want is me? offensive to did, me. Let me speak first, because you don't know what I'm going to say. Just this let me cannot speak. left without response. No, no, let me, let, you don't know what I was going to say. I'm going to give you the opportunity to say a few words, but, um, okay. Um, but not, um, just respond, 
but we are 30 seconds. Um, I have to give another member the opportunity because- No, I'm challenging we, the ruling of the, of, the, are, of the chair. We are- um, Point of order, I'm challenging the ruling of the chair. No problem. I would we, like a vote on this matter. No. Vote on what? Um, vote on whether or not to, to allow the member uh, to speak and that we end the meeting. Allow the member to speak? Okay, so- So but you want to silence me? <laughs> that's okay. Can we? Can this we, is a committee of the board. It's okay. It's okay. Through chair. Okay. Um, so why, we, why, did, why did you uh, allow yourself to speak without voting? Um, can, um, no, well, you were welcome I, to challenge it, but I'm just saying again. No, no, no. This is. This is Thank you. Um, yeah, sorry, I had to, we have to do that. Um, the, one of the things is that um, it is a situation that we have to take um, respectfully amongst our group, ourselves. We're all parent reps and we all uh, are PIAC reps here. And um, I don't want to, whether it's right, wrong or not, I just need, need to make sure that we as parents and ad, as adults, we conduct ourselves in a, you know, kind of calm ourselves and just respond. Um, but here, I'm gonna ask you to speak, but um, we are over time, but I don't want to show disrespect neither to Andrew nor to you. I need you to respond and then um, go ahead and say what you need to say, but in a 30 seconds or less, please, okay? What I want to say that the main objective of this committee is to represent parents. So coming here and accusing, not listening to them, not listening to anyone who represent them and trying to silence them, this is a, com uh, a complete violation to the basic principles of this committee and what it is based on. So I am demanding to uh, for a, a re-education for the member who wanted to silence me. Okay. Um, we are threading in waters that we have not gone before, but it is this is good, um, and I'm happy that we're here. And um, what um, I'd like to say is that. Um, no one will be silenced. We will speak and, and educate ourselves and um, ensure that um, as long as this is within the purview of PIAC and what we're supposed to be representing, then we will speak on behalf of it. Um, and I need to ensure that every single one of us feels good about being part of PIAC, and that's the key. Um, I am going to one of my... Senior, st well, my, I'm going to ask Trustee King to say a few words, and then um, go ahead, Trustee King, because, um, yeah, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you to the chair. Uh, I would just reiterate that, yes, PIAC has the role and responsibility of representing parent voice. It also has the role and uh, responsibility of adhering to board policies, code of conduct, vision, and expectations that includes the respect and inclusion of all students, staff, and community, regardless of their identity. So, commentary that is contradictory to those values, which is homophobic, transphobic, racist, or any other, or oppressive in any other manner, uh, would not be the conversation that we're looking to have. There are conversations that need to be had around education, around understanding of curriculum, around understanding of what's delivered to our students in school, and there absolutely has to be a place for respectful discussion on those issues. What we need to be careful of is that we're not crossing into lines where we're, uh, we're having conversations that are centering values and sharing voices and words and opinions that are, again, directly contradictory 
to our values as a board. So hopefully that uh, clarifies, and I don't know if maybe senior staff have anything that they want to add to that. Go ahead, through you, Chair. Go ahead. Through you, Chair, I was going to echo what was said by Trustee King, so I won't repeat it. Thank you. And one of the things as a group, we have to remember that we cannot be contradictory to the Human Rights Code as well. So um, if, it's a, if it's contrary to the human rights, which is legal, we cannot be, um, we, we have to um, adhere to human rights code, okay? Um, in on this thing, so you wanted to adjourn? Go ahead. Yeah, okay. yeah. We wouldn't be able to comment at December here, I'm sorry. We'll speak about it after, okay? But we have to, I'm not shutting you down, but I have to, um, in the interest of time, okay? Go ahead. So I, I echo Sharon in the interest of time, and that is all it is. It's all about time. It's not about voice and conversation at this exact moment. It is about time. So I'd like to uh, set a motion to adjourn this meeting. Do I have someone to, Jen? Do I have someone to second that? Kidding, thank you. And thank you very much, everybody, for being here this evening and sharing some very important conversations. <laughs>